stopped dead in his tracks by Melania's latest outfit. Prince Harry became the first member of the royal family to meet a Trump since last year's presidential election when he met First Lady Melania in Toronto ahead of the Invictus Games opening ceremony on Saturday. Mrs. Trump and Harry spent less than 30 minutes together before the royal left for another engagement, the Jaguar Land Rover driving challenge. Despite its brevity, the meeting appeared cordial with the pair warmly shaking hands before settling down to talk in a room at the Sheraton Hotel. The 33-year-old prince dressed in a dark blue suit while the 47-year-old first lady wore a tailored black and white dog tooth Dior suit and black heels. Harry initially appeared awkward when he was introduced to the Slovenian former model, smiling brightly for the cameras before letting it drop as he turned away. The pair then engaged in small talk with Mrs. Trump thanking the prince for coming before he asked her if she had been in Canada long. Harry and the U.S. First Lady then settled down to discuss the Invictus Games' success. Subsequently Mrs. Trump moved on to meet some of the veterans taking part for Team USA in the Games while Harry moved on to a meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Mrs. Trump is leading the U.S. delegation at the international sporting event in her first solo foreign trip and the first known meeting of a member of the royal family with a member of the Trump family since the election. It's not the Trump's first encounter with royalty, however. In November 2005, the president and first lady, then just a newlywed couple, met Harry's father, Prince Charles, during a reception at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. The trip is her first solo trip as First Lady as she leads the U.S. delegation to the Games and is set to meet both the United Kingdom's Prince Harry of Wales and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau later today. The Games are an international, multi-sport event founded by Prince Harry where wounded armed service members and veterans compete in sports, including wheelchair basketball and sitting volleyball. About 100 American athletes are participating in the games. Share on Facebook. Johns Hopkins psychiatrist drops truth bomb about transgenders, liberals furious. It is simply amazing how such a tiny minority in our country. Just three tenths of a percent. has forced a national debate about whether the public bathroom they visit should or should not match the gender of their plumbing. The entire notion of gender is being questioned. It is now bigoted to believe we live in a gender binary world. The idea that humans come in only two flavors, male and female, is seen as outdated, old fashioned antiquated and just plain mean. Now we must accept gender fluidity. Children as young as four are being encouraged to choose their gender identity, as if it were a Halloween costume. And according to a noted psychiatrist, that's just about right. As CNS News reports, Dr. Paul R. McHugh, the Distinguished Service Professor of Psychiatry at Johns Hopkins University and former psychiatrist-in-chief for Johns Hopkins Hospital, who has studied transgendered people for 40 years, said it is a scientific fact that transgendered men do not become women, nor do transgendered women become men. All such people, he explained in an article for the Witherspoon Institute, become feminized men or masculinized women counterfeits or impersonators of the sex with which they identify. Dr. McHugh, who was psychiatrist-in-chief at Johns Hopkins Hospital for 26 years, the medical institute that had initially pioneered sex change surgery, and later ceased the practice, stressed that the cultural meme, or idea that one sex is fluid and a matter of choice is extremely damaging, especially to young people. Now this will really whip liberals into a frenzy. But Dr. McHugh says those who wish to change their gender suffer from a psychiatric condition, not an accident of birth. Gender dysphoria, the official psychiatric term for feeling oneself to be of the opposite sex, belongs in the family of similarly disordered assumptions about the body, such as anorexia nervosa and body dysmorphic disorder, said McHugh. Its treatment should not be directed at the body as with surgery and hormones any more than one treats obesity-fearing anorexic patients with liposuction, he said.
Perhaps the most tragic part of this new trend is the consequence. After the immense pain and hardship of transitioning, a high percentage of transgendered individuals eventually take their own lives. When the tumult and shouting dies, McHugh continued, it proves not easy nor wise to live in a counterfeit sexual garb. The most thorough follow-up of sex reassigned people, extending over 30 years and conducted in Sweden, where the culture is strongly supportive of the transgendered, documents their lifelong mental unrest. 10 to 15 years after surgical reassignment, the suicide rate of those who had undergone sex reassignment surgery rose to 20 times that of comparable peers, said McHugh. I will probably get hammered by our liberal readers for apparently trivializing this issue, but here I go anyway. When I was growing up in the 70s there was a TV commercial for chiffon margarine, which apparently tasted just like butter. But it's not. The very last, and very famous, line from the commercial was it's not nice to fool mother nature. Apparently that is still the case. LeBron James goes to war on Trump with a vicious attack, but he wasn't prepared for the blowback. On Saturday, President Donald Trump fired off a tweet about NBA star Steph Curry that had the internet talking. Curry is one of the star players from the 2016-17 NBA champion Golden State Warriors. Prior to Trump jumping at Curry, the Warriors guard said he didn't want to follow the tradition of sports teams visiting the White House. I don't want to go. That's the nucleus of my belief. It's not just me going to the White House. If it was, this would be a pretty short conversation, Curry said. In response, Trump tweeted. Curry quickly became a trending topic on social media. Then, Cleveland Cavaliers forward LeBron James reacted to Trump's tweet with a personal attack on the president that could cost him some fans. James tweeted. There were a lot of reactions to James's tweet. Trump hasn't commented as of yet since James's tweet. But if his comments on NFL players who kneel during the anthem are any indication, we should probably expect a response soon. Boycott them popular restaurant tells veterans to remove the flag and get out. Degenerate liberals don't want anyone to be allowed to express patriotism near them. This restaurant must be run by some of their snowflakes. In Kentwood, Michigan, a Dave and Busters told American Legion officers they had to take off their jackets because of gang affiliation. The jacket had an American flag, the prisoner of war flag, and a bald eagle on it. Via military.com, the only gang these gentlemen belonged to was the veteran gang. Victor Murdoch and Adrian Brown, who are both American Legion riders post 179 had stopped at the restaurant to get some food. Instead of a meal, they were reprimanded for their show of patriotism. A spokeswoman for the company, April Spearman, stated that the no-gang symbol policy is in place to ensure that everyone is able to enjoy themselves in a fun and safe environment. The spokesperson argued that the company knows the American Legion has a positive message and mission, but they couldn't allow the individuals to wear their jackets, just to maintain consistency. It's understandable that the restaurant, which largely caters to families and children, wouldn't want any gang affiliation on the premises. But the American Legion, with American flags and bald eagles, is not a gang. If it is, we the people are officially gang members. The restaurant tried to backpedal and apologize for the frustration for the incident, but they should have apologized for their stupidity instead. I think the real reason why they wanted them to remove those jackets is because some liberal was offended and complained to the management. Simply put, the bald eagle and the American flag are now reason enough for leftists to throw a fit, overly sensitive morons. It's ridiculous, frankly that our veterans had to deal with this. They only wanted to show their American and military pride, a pride we should all share. Telling them that they can't show that pride is like shoving their sacrifice back in their face. These men were clearly veterans and were looking for nothing more than a warm meal so they could get on their way. 
and they were embarrassed for being proud of their service to our country. If Dave and Busters want to turn away our veterans, then so be it, but I will no longer be a patron of their company. Unlike they do, I have American and military pride. What do you think about this comment below? Donald Trump cancels NBA championship invitation to Steph Curry and the Warriors. President Donald Trump abruptly canceled a White House invitation to the Golden State Warriors after star Steph Curry signaled reluctance to attend. Going to the White House is considered a great honor for a championship team, Trump said. Stephen Curry is hesitating, therefore invitation is withdrawn. Officially, the team hadn't made a decision about whether or not they would meet with Trump at the White House. Curry bluntly said, I don't want to go, to reporters in Oakland on Friday. Curry said that the team didn't stand for what Trump had said and hadn't said in the right terms and said that the team wouldn't stand for it. By acting and not going, hopefully that will inspire some change when it comes to what we tolerate in this country and what is accepted and what we turn a blind eye to, he said. Obama spent $38,000 on military device, Trump solved the problem for $30. While campaigning in 2016, President Trump repeatedly called for modernizing our outdated and depleted military. Now, the Navy is integrating a truly modern device. Advanced submarine periscopes historically relied on clunky, hard-to-find, and expensive joysticks. Now, after considerable testing, these joysticks will be replaced with off-the-shelf Xbox controllers. When thinking of a submarine, one typically pictures it equipped with the traditional rotating tube periscope. That is, a single hanging tube for the navigator to peer out of. The periscope extends above sea level and offers one sailor a view of the surrounding area. This design, however, was replaced long ago with photonic masts capable of rotating 360 degrees. High-resolution cameras attached to the masts offer an entire control room and above-water view. Virginia-class submarines, the Navy's most advanced underwater vessels, typically come equipped with photonic mast hand grips designed by Lockheed Martin. The hand grips, which cost about $38,000 each, are considered clunky and unnecessarily heavy by many sailors. The hand grips are designed only for Virginia-class submarines, and would be impossible to replace if damaged in an emergency. A better solution was not formulated until now. The Navy got together and they asked a bunch of, junior officers, and junior guys, what can we do to make your life better? Explained Lt. J.G. Kyle Leonard who serves on the Virginia class USS John Warner. And one of the things that came out is the controls for the scope. It's kind of clunky in your hand, it's real heavy. The solution was simple, and the expensive hand grips were replaced with off-the-shelf Xbox controllers which cost about $30 on average. Not only are Xbox controllers considerably cheaper than the Lockheed Martin hand grips, but most young sailors are already comfortable with video game controllers. Another feature in favor of Xbox controllers is their ubiquity. The Lockheed Martin joystick is by no means cheap, and it is only designed to fit on a Virginia-class submarine, explained Senior Chief Mark Eichenlaub, the assistant navigator on the USS John Warner. I can go to any video game store and procure an Xbox controller anywhere in the world, so it makes a very easy replacement. After testing the Xbox controller, the Navy found that sailors were able to quickly adapt to the new technology. While it would take hours of training to learn how to operate the previous hand grips, sailors can become proficient with Xbox controllers in a matter of minutes, thanks to their intuitive inputs. The Xbox controllers will be installed on all Virginia-class ships in operation. All new submarines, such as the USS Colorado currently under commission, will come equipped with Xbox controls.
Eichenlaub stated that this is part of a larger push from the Navy to modernize their vessels by integrating consumer technology that younger Americans are already comfortable with, such as touchscreen computers and virtual spaces. Ideally, what they want to see in 10 years down the road is, there's basically a glass panel display with windows, and you can just pull a window of information, review that, push it off, bring in the next window, Eichenlaub explained. They want to bring in sailors with what they have at home on their personal laptop, their personal desktop, what they grew up with in a classroom. The added benefit, technology like this is, apparently, considerably less expensive. Trump on players kneeling for national anthem get that son of a bee off the field. President Donald Trump said NFL owners should not tolerate players disrespecting the American flag, suggesting Friday they ought to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Trump, in Alabama campaigning for Senator Luther Strange, R. Alabama, in his primary battle with Roy Moore, said he and Strange were united in their pride for the country and respect for the flag. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when someone disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now? Out. He's fired. He's fired, Trump yelled, to huge cheers. The crowd began chanting USA. You know, some owner's going to do that, Trump said. He is going to say, that guy who disrespects our flag, he's fired. Trump called it a total disrespect of our heritage. NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick began kneeling for the national anthem last year to draw attention to police brutality practices and other examples of racial injustice, and some other players have followed suit. Kaepernick, who reached the Super Bowl in the 2012 season with the San Francisco 49ers, is currently a free agent, and his supporters argue owners are staying away from signing him because of the controversy surrounding him. What do you think about this comment below? Nine hundred eleven survivor comes forward, reveals the real truth about Donald Trump. September eleventh, two thousand one, will always live in the hearts of Americans as one of the biggest tragedies our country has ever faced. Now, over fifteen years later, we are still striving to make America a safe place for ourselves and future generations. One first responder from 9-11, Philip Kirshner, is struggling to get his health back on track after helping at Ground Zero. According to Briet Bart, the courageous survivor spoke at length about his health, his political beliefs post-9-11, and how he believes that President Trump is a good person, despite the left's opinion. I want people to learn that he's a humanitarian, that he reaches out, he donates, Kirshner said. He also recalled that he, Donald Trump, did a couple, quite a number, of angel flights with groups. As of now, Kirshner is battling heart disease and kidney cancer. He said that, despite the problems he may be facing now, he does not regret helping people that day. In 2011, Kirshner was hospitalized in Florida, and needed to go to the Cleveland Clinic to get the treatment he required. Unfortunately, Florida refused to transport him, which left him with few options. The survivor explained that he was able to make it to the Cleveland Clinic in 2011 due to President Trump's donation, which came through the charity group Angel Flight. It was at this point that Kirshner knew he needed to clear the air about President Trump once and for all. He did a couple, quite a number, of Angel Flights with groups, Kirshner recalled. I want people to learn that he's a humanitarian, that he reaches out, he donates. It's messages like these that the mainstream media is quite eager to ignore, so most people don't know the truth. However, it's obvious that Trump has been helping people for a very long time. He is not the cold and calculating businessman that the media says he is. Kirshner went on to explain how he was a lifelong Democrat until September 11. 2001. One of the deciding factors for him was his fiancée losing her job. She was also forced to train her replacement, a foreigner who was here on an H-1B visa. 
Since that time, his eyes have been opened to other obvious truths. This nation is in such dire straits right now. I am a student of history, and when you change the language and when you dumb it down and you change the moral and ethical code of a nation, things like Nazi Germany could happen. That's my concern. Kirshner explained that we need a candidate who will make an effort to work toward establishing a better country, something President Trump has been doing since his first day in office. It is this kind of change, Kirshner reasoned, that could save us. Kirshner also explained that he would never vote for Hillary Clinton. His cited reason at the time was that he believes her relationship with the Muslim Sisterhood is counterproductive to American values. All in all, the point is, there is more to President Trump than meets the eye. When you only follow the mainstream media, you lose stories like Kirshner's. Trump's border wall has one new feature that enrages Mexico. Of all the wonderful things that President Donald Trump says and does, liberals are particularly triggered by his promise to build a wall on the Mexican border. Liberals hate the idea of a border wall for two reasons. First, it hurts their precious feelings. They get sad when they realize that people need to be deported in order for us to live in a nation of laws. In their minds, America is a magical place filled with candy and unicorns, where everyone is allowed to just hop in and get free stuff. Little do they know that the real world does not work this way, and that this mentality has devastated our economy. Second, and perhaps most importantly, liberals hate the wall because they know that its existence would shrink a valuable Democratic voting bloc. Millions of illegal immigrants vote for Democratic candidates. Whether it's because they are forced to buy local politicians or because they truly support the liberal platform, illegals vote en masse for Democrats. Since Democrats have come to rely on illegal support to win elections, they bend over backwards to grow the illegal population. They know that any plan to restrict illegal immigration would hurt their electoral chances, and thus they oppose the wall. As a result, liberals were quick to celebrate when the administration announced that it would delay plans to build a wall. They got so carried away with excitement that they even made fun of the president and his supporters for believing that such a project could be completed in the first place. Now, however, the joke is on them. As reported by Fox News, the agency in charge of U.S. border security plans to start building prototypes for President Trump's proposed wall with Mexico later this summer. Ronald Vitiello, Customs and Border Protection's acting deputy commissioner, said Tuesday that four to eight companies will get contracts for prototypes in San Diego that could be models for the roughly 2,000 mile border. Companies will have 30 days to complete the models. Watch this video about a possible wall prototype. It looks like we will get our wall, and it looks like it will be better than anyone expected. Leave it to President Trump to take a construction project and make it even better. Most people expected the wall to consist of simple concrete slabs. Trump, on the other hand, wants only the best. That is why he is open to a more innovative wall which contains solar panels and other fascinating high-tech features. Of course Mexico cannot be happy about this, watching their rich high-tech neighbor come up with solutions that will allow them to keep out illegals and make money back while they're at it. All while they still worry that Trump will penalize them on trade for the way they have hurt America's economy all these years. Regardless of the wall's exact nature, Americans should be ecstatic that a wall will end up being built. Our southern border has been wide open for far too long. Millions of individuals, including criminals, gang members, and terrorists, have entered the United States by simply passing over some bushes or a small wire fence. Once they arrive here, they sell drugs and commit other crimes. Even non-criminal illegal immigrants cause problems by taking jobs and receiving welfare benefits. This must come to an end if we ever want to fix our broken economy and culture. Fortunately, President Trump is committed to making America great again. It looks like now we will finally get to build that wall.
exclusive black female executive speaks out about working for Trump family. On May 2, 2016 a stirring video entitled, The Trump Family That I Know, produced by Trump Organization executive Lynn Patton, has gone viral with more than 2 million views on YouTube in just a few days. As a black female executive at the Trump Organization I can no longer remain silent about the repeated and reprehensible attempts to align my boss and his family with racist hate-mongering groups, campaigns, and messaging, Patton says in the five-minute clip. According to LinkedIn, Patton joined the Trump Organization in May 2009 and is currently director of the Eric Trump Foundation and assistant to Eric Trump, I've got Trump and Donald Trump Jr., according to the Eric Trump Foundation's website. Patton's Facebook page is replete with pictures of her having fun with the Trump family, and her Twitter account is a consistent stream of supportive posts defending the Republican Party's presumptive presidential nominee. The Trump family that I know is without question one of the most generous, compassionate and philanthropic families that I've ever had the privilege of knowing and the honor to call friends, Patton says in the video. They have been incredibly loyal to me and the countless dedicated people they employ around the world, hiring more minority and female executives than any other company for which I have worked. A portion of Patton's video defends Donald Trump's call for a temporary ban on Muslims entering the U.S. To equate racism with my boss's call for a temporary moratorium on a flawed immigration system that radical Islamic terrorists continue to exploit, or the construction of an impassable wall to protect our borders from the influx of illegal drugs, is not only incendiary, it's wholly irresponsible and only serves to embolden the very hatred these draconian groups espouse. At one point in the video, Patton reassures her would be naysayers that she is, in fact, a highly intelligent, free-thinking and independent woman and that her opinions and decisions are based solely on fact, not fiction, speculation, assumption or hearsay. Patton concludes with a message to those skeptics who will undoubtedly claim that I am doing this at the behest of the Trump family or with the promise of reward, I deliberately chose not to seek their approval nor counsel in advance to this video for fear that there would be more concern for me and its potential viral ramifications than they would be for themselves and the fact that quite simply this is the right thing to do. Watch. This isn't just a race to Mr. Trump. This isn't just a race to his family nor to our veterans or the unemployed, and because of that this family is willing to risk their own lives each and every day for the greater good of this country," she said. God bless his family, God bless the voters and God bless the United States of America, Patton said in conclusion. What do you think about this comment below?